Hi. What is Plotinus doing? Right, that's all. Look. <clears throat> now, these are a bunch of terms, and he wants to deal with them. And he's using Aristotle, thinking that the genus species differentia can be used to understand these terms. <clears throat> What's interesting is that he doesn't use the Parmenides. Yes, please. Yeah, good. He doesn't use the Parmenides. He uses Aristotle. What I'm suggesting is, <clears throat> forget Aristotle. Let's see how he uses these terms. So. All we need is a couple of good quotes. So how many have a text? Do not have a text. Okay, that's everyone. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, look here. I'll read a couple. You tell me what to do with them. Time and place. Um, There are three major ideas. And it comes out of this term. Right? Usia means that property that reflects it, the kind of you know, mind we have like in dream work. We can reflect upon ourselves, right? We can reflect upon ourselves. That's a, an essential mindful activity. For that to be the case, would you agree there must be something that is intellected? And equally well, this is an activity, therefore it's, it's in principle is in motion. At this point, when it reaches its goal, it's at rest. When it's at rest from this recursive activity, what is encountered then is being. So the three primary terms that he has from this word usia is motion, rest, and being. Now he also says, by the way, 
each one of these can be, can be talked about as singular. Therefore, each is A, 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 right? That is to say, each of this functions as a oneness, as a one or a oneness. So therefore, there must be something in the one, right? that in the one, th there must be something about the one which allows the kind of relationship with Usia. Therefore, you could say that inherent in the one is Usia. behind it all. And now he's going to have a problem because he also recognizes that the one is also can be used in, in interchange with the good. Now, each of these is also good So therefore, the idea of goodness runs through all of these. Now, this reflecting upon itself, what is doing that? What is doing this activity? All right. The intellect, the intellect is intellecting the intelligible or being. Well, wait a minute. Each of these, I mean, they're all different, and yet they work together in unity, and therefore there's a sameness that accompanies the unity of the three together. And that experience itself can be called the luminous light of being. And for those of you who like the Republic, uh, he mentions that at uh, um, 518 or 517-18 in the Republic. So let me get back into this, right? Here's a couple of more lines. Now, See, uh, when, when motion, right, this motion, see, this activity, it's the life of the self. That motion is nothing other than, right, see, this is living, this is a living force. that happens to be intelligible. Right. And he's saying, you know what? That the active energy of the self, ah, right. so, the active energy, see, It's of the self, right? because in order for this activity to go on, you need energy and power, right? Um, if you have the power that presupposes energy, right? So he's saying, 
that this going on, this activity going on in this way, that's the active energy of the self. And it's the self of Usia. Okay. Hey, that means that as far as he's concerned, the idea of the self has an energy, and that energy of the self is nothing other than Usia. And when you have that, that can only be because there's a relationship between the one and the self. Whatever is said about the one can be translated into the self and equally the self, the one. So, and what is then encountered? Being. Look here, all of his thinking and reflection in this section is nothing other than how to use these, this language and how to connect them up with these other ideas. That's all he's doing. Where is it? Eight. Uh, actually, at, at the end of seven. Uh, So then, how should we separate rest from the self? And in turn, not separate rest from the self. It's by separating it to such an extent from the intellect. That's all. Yeah, that makes sense. Motion of the self. All right, what do you want to call it? You want to call it an act of energy and uh, when it reaches the point of rest, that's its end, that's its telos. And therefore, when you have that experience, he then goes one nice step further, and he says, uh, you need another word for this, and that is real being, or ontos. So, I'm now in section A. Uh, Here, quick, quick question. Ah. So, so this is just retranslating what used to what we used to translate as. Just as we separated motion from it. You're, we're now reading just as we separated motion from self. Yes as being the same and not the same as self. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, so you got uh, a very important issue. Uh, curiously enough, a good part of his thinking deals with how can you use these two words? Like, in one sense, you can see the way we're linking them up, it looks like there's a similarity that connects them all. But he wants to say, no, 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 no. There's a fundamental difference. That each of these is distinctive. Therefore, you have to consider them separately. So, um, he's going to have them... Uh, then the primary ideas are going to be one, two, three, four. 
to make sure they're different and functioning separately, yet they are all linked together interchangeably in respect to the way they function, not the way they are. Right? So therefore, uh, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. Now these become the primary terms. And he's going to say, they are different than these two terms. He wants to keep them separated because a lot of these are the ways they function. But you can still talk about them just being in themselves. And when you do that, you're just taking them by themselves. And therefore, you can't put them in the same class as being used or functioning with these other terms. You can take them separately by the way in which they are by themselves. It's different. So therefore, one, two, three, four, five, there's five principal ideas. And you can't link them in the same class as either the, with these two terms, one and self. And uh, what's curious is that he doesn't link Usia as one of the primary terms. And that's because it's going to take him a while to link Usia with participation. And as we mentioned before, he's not going to use the idea of participation since he's an Aristotle using Aristotelian terms and therefore he doesn't need the idea of participation until further in the end he then sneaks in the idea of participation. But up to this point, he's still an Aristotelian keeping them separate and keeping participation out of it. Well, does he, uh, does he bring the term likeness into it in any way, even in the sense of associating it with participation? Yeah, well, see, likeness and other likeness um, are terms that are going to be linked with participation. And therefore, he's not going to use them until later in the section 12, 13. Um, see, uh, I don't mean that to be obscure, but uh, if something participates in something, right? Uh, say this is an idea. Uh, things that participate in it necessarily become like. And they also, to that degree, are unlike. So therefore, the idea of participation and the idea of likeness are linked together. Uh, but you're saying participation is a condition for likeness. Yeah, for likeness. For likeness. And unlikeness, right. And since he's not dealing with this until much later, he finally picks it up because he's influenced at this point by Aristotle and you don't need it. Um, why, why, why is a guy like Plotinus messing around with Aristotle? Oh, I'm Plotinus. glad you asked that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's a great drive among many people in the classical world that try, who try to reconcile Aristotle and Plato. He's one of them. Well, Why does he do that? I don't know. I wish I knew his cook. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's the same question, but, you know, like, <clears throat> Proclus started out, you know, they, they taught him Aristotle first before they let him go into, Pro, before they let him go into Plato. Why? Why did, they, why, did, why did the Platonic school start everybody out in Aristotle? It just as it happens to be a very good question, and uh, I let you speculate.
They want to show the unity of Hellenic thought. What blocks them are these two thinkers. Yeah, but reconciling them. But Plotinus is just about as mystical as you can get. He's not a materialist. What's he doing with this guy? With Aristotle? He's not a slouch. Why are you yeah. doing it? It's okay. much There's more pragmatic and methodological. Yeah. Here's a guy who's got Platonism throughout his whole soul. Yeah. And the, the current thinking is Aristotelian. And he's going to say, I can take your language and in some way, without criticizing it or, or doing a, a reductio or anything, take it and, and show how it can function in a platonic world. Yeah, I would say that equally well um, in universities today, people who are involved in Greek thought, the odds are likely that most of them are Aristotelians. If, if he had lived in a Christian era, he could have done the same thing, I think. Yeah, oh but, yeah. But, but what he's challenged with is Aristotelian thought. And so he's taking that on in an effort to make it clear to as a matter of fact, there's great similarities between St. Thomas Aquinas and Aristotle. They both saw themselves as the culmination of a whole historical development. They see themselves as the last stages in that development. They both share that vision. And, uh, and they both uh, have a spotty record in doing so. Tyrannical dogmatism. Yeah. So Dave, you're saying Plotinus is kind of doing what like pseudo Dionysius does, but to a lesser degree? No, I think it's more like doing like what uh, Socrates would do with Theaetetus. Take the ideas and clarify them. I, and, and by the way, your reference to Dionysius is totally lost. <laughs> he takes like the elements of theology and puts Christian terms on it and it flows right. through the church for like thousand years before they realize, uh oh, there's Platonism in here, we got to get rid of it. I, I was going to say, and tell you guys, no, saying, yeah, he's, he's elevating Platonism to a, a modern language. So. Are you saying he was like speaking in code? Or? Well, pseudo Dionysius? Mm -hmm. He takes a, if you like look at, I think it's the elements of theology, and you take the pseudo Dionysius, he just changes words and puts Christianized words. But the ideas there until they realize somewhere down the road that yeah. this isn't in art stuff at all. This is Plato or Plotinus that yeah. hopeless are taking uh, it out of. See, Aristotle wants to make a big point that the good or the self is not knowable. That's the Nicomachean ethics. He starts out with it. He says, you know, the only goods I'm interested in are those kinds of goods that are attainable, not the good itself. Here, let me give you a, a, a yoga. Ready? And again, I'm on section eight. If those who are immaterial, I'm on about five lines down in section eight. If those who are immaterial have been intellected, what does that mean? They've gone through this activity. They've been intellected, they have done this, using the intellect, intellecting the intelligible. This is their existence. But you must also see pure intellect and gaze at self attentively, not by seeing self with these eyes. Surely then you see the hearth of Usia and a sleepless light in the self. And you'll see how they stand in self and how they stand apart and how they be all together, abiding life and intellection whose activity is not directed towards that which will be, but to that which is now, or rather now and always now. And that which is always present 
by intellecting in itself, not outside. Therefore, on the one hand, in its intellection, there is active energy, motion. On the other hand, it's intellecting itself, the osea, and that which is for being. It also intellects by being itself and by being directed to that which is impelled or drives, as it were, to being. Please see if we look at her. Let's do it again. You must see pure intellect and gaze at self attentively, not by seeing self with those eyes. Surely then you see the hearth of Usia and a sleepless light in self. And then how they stand in self and how they stand apart and how they're all together, abiding life and intellection. Right? whose activity is to turn upon itself. So what is he doing? He's got a yoga. Presupposes, it presupposes to see this is the intellect purely, when it's pure. Right. Uh, would you agree that we've seen some people in dream work who are in a state of mind where they're seeing clearly that's intellect. You're seeing clearly that's intellect. Right? Now what if you were to say at that moment, what is it you're seeing with the pure intellect? He wants you to go to the next <coughs> being or the intelligible, which is the same thing. So, would you find it interesting that several people had dreams where they are, in fact, entering into pure intellect? Then comes the tension, uh-oh. Dangerous, might be dangerous. Pull back, or... But technically, that process of looking at our dreams is not looking at self. That's right. Keep going, though. I mean, Even though he says gaze attentively at the self, at the self right? you're not doing it with your eyes. That's right. When but you're you, in that state, would you agree with the people that had those dreams that they were in that pure state, this is what they should be doing. Take advantage of that moment, right? And do what? Turn about the intellect, the intellect. Go deeper. Yeah. How do you go deeper? Ask what gaze is upon the self and the sleepless light within it. <laughs> As the Chinese say, you drop all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is letting go. See, look here. This is letting go, intellecting. That's letting go of everything, yeah. right? When you let go of everything, now you're in a different state, the intelligible, which is pure sin. But that's... It's a, uh, that's to see, uh, yeah. But are you not in that state? Are you not clear? Yeah. Hmm. Is there some energy there? Yeah. Hmm. But even in that state, technically speaking, I think that's still not self. That's right. Looking at self. That's right. That's right. All you got is being. So you're still in the second. At that that's point. right. No. So See, you don't have self, you have being or pure being. So could I would I be at all close to say, technically speaking, Usia well, we've already discovered in the Parmenides, Usia is really not present in the first because the first cannot 
look at the first. That's right. See, he's not, for some curious reason, see, he's an Aristotle. He's not in political, he's not in the Parmenides. Yeah, how did that happen? Like, he wouldn't have this difficulty. He wouldn't be writing this way if he was in the Parmenides. Though he makes many of the points where, uh, which can be seen to be valid in terms of the Parmenides without the structure. Is it, so is he just writing out of personal experience without having been able to connect it to the Parmenides in his lifetime? Well, uh, well, he doesn't. <coughs> he doesn't what? He does not connect it with the Parmenides. Right. By that I mean he doesn't un he doesn't deal with the uh, eight hypotheses as well as the first, which is nine altogether. He, he did, he. Or especially here, he's not into the second and the third, which is what he needs to be. I think you're selling him a little short. Very often he does make a special point of disregarding the one. Yes. And and does and, and for very good reason. Yes. Because it wouldn't be a, a, a discussion that we could have while developing all these other very, very lofty. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, yeah, he, the, we can find several examples where he's not clear at all about the way these two terms relate. Mm -hmm. He calls the self oneself, he calls uh, uh, the self one. Backwards and forwards, which is not legitimate in terms of your dealing with the hypotheses. Yeah, you're quite right. I think he has a certain respect for yeah. the first hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's more it's more than that. You know, it's 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 more than that. See, like, I, I could uh, uh, show you how he's tying it into Aristotle in this section. So that, so that all our being and motion and rest and these three genera pervade through holes and each of their subsequence is a particular being and a particular rest and a particular motion. Surely then, when anyone sees these three, by having come into uh, an intellectual insight of the nature of that which is, by seeing being, by the being in themselves and in others, and the others, the motion in self, by the motion in themselves. See, see, see the language he's using? See? He's interested in these three genera, which is being, motion, and rest. And he's talking Aristotelian. Right? He's, 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 there's a whole section as how to understand. In a way, what he's doing is what Aristotle couldn't do, he's doing. He's trying to make sense of Plato in terms of Aristotelian categories and thereby save Aristotle. Not, uh, just as uh, Jeff and David were talking about, not all that different from pseudo-Dionysius. That's, that's right. That's right. So that's a, a pseudo-Dionysius borrowed on, on uh, Proclus. So Plotinus is borrowing from Aristotle to reconcile what he sees in Plato, Aristotelian life. Yeah. Um, so he's really taking materialism, essentially. He's taking materialist and uh, blowing yeah. his mind, essentially. 
well, yeah, some wings, right? Yes, materialism or phenomenalism. Yeah, that's right. He's giving, he's putting life on these terms. Okay. His categories are all phenomenalistic or materialistic, yeah, or empirical. And he's showing how you can use that language to understand Plato, or he's Platonizing Aristotelian thought, however you want to describe it. I may be going out on a limb, but it, it strikes me that the use of his language and what he's attempting to do is rather limited. For example, a definition of the definition of Lucia that he uses that you're presenting, mm -hmm. just this turning about, yeah. implies a process or an operation in yes. space. Yes. But it, it, it's impossible to do that in terms of space. In, in terms of the it's, physical it's, reality, it's, that ain't there. Yeah, it's purely a metaphor. Absolutely right. So that in itself kind of like frays yeah. the edges of the language that he's trying yeah. to use to describe this thing we call Lucia. Yeah. You know, he's pushing the limits of Aristotelian thought to make it look like it's Platonic. It doesn't really work. Yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Some people think it works. I don't think it works. But you don't think it. So we share that. But, uh, but that is also I, the... I don't know about that. Just two minutes ago you took a section out and called it a yoga. That's working, ain't it? There's no doubt about the fact that he has very significant parts in there. He has a yoga. But he's deeply involved in always trying to recollect it in terms of the, the genera, species genera differentiator. Um. Yeah, like when he, in, uh, he has that great line, uh, 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 Here I am, here I am, once again, in the everyday world. Why did I leave it? Why did I leave that world that I experienced? That's the way, that's the way he talks. And he, I don't know anything about the gentleman's mind other than what I've read, but uh, he's, behaviorist, a biologist, and he's got a good system for dealing with the phenomenal world up to a certain point. You're talking to Aristotle at this point. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, want to do something different? Mm -hmm. uh, want to jump into the time is? Sure. Uh, or pro how about Proclus's elements? So or they're both, they're both, they've both been pending for a long time. Yeah. Right there on the edge of our agenda. How about it? Do it? Elements. Next time? Which one? Which one? Uh, 28. 28 what? Or end of 27, 28 oh, in, no. the, in the time years. Time years. Time years or elements? Time years. Time years. Well, wait a minute. Would you want to tr talk about it? Make any difference which one you want? The Balboas, by the way, are doing a new translation of Proclus's Elements of Theology, which is really speaks very well for them, and it looks like it's going in a great direction, but we have to wait until he finishes it. Well, in that case, and they said they're getting close, so why don't we do a week or two of something else as well? Okay. Until we'll do, they're done. We'll do the time is. Well, time right. is what? So 27 on? 27 on. They're on. Okay. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Oh, uh, 28, right? 27. Now we need a beer call. <laughs>